Whoa! Where did this come from? There's a new box! And it looks just like this box! What could they be? Let's find out right after the intro. Let's hit it. Before I go too far in the video, I do want to say that uh, just the equipment that's used in filming this video. Up above me, I have an Aperture 120D Mark II that is our key light with a Godox 46 inch softbox. Uh, behind us, I have two newer, they're like pancake LED bicolor panels essentially. They're circular and they're great for backlight. So as you can see, kind of the edge around my head and shoulders. Um, audio wise, we are using a Rode NTG3 uh, on a boom pole with the Rode blimp attached to it. Um, and that is actually feeding directly into the FX3, which is what this video is being shot on. So as you can see, there's two boxes. I'm only gonna open up one. We already opened one and I wanted to set it up so that you guys could get a good idea of what this camera looks like. You can go back to any of our previous videos in this same setting and see what the a7 III looks like compared to it because anything prior to this was filmed on the a7 III. So, all right guys, as you can see here, I have two boxes and uh, inside each of these boxes is a new camera. Now, a couple things that we need to cover before we get into the unboxing. These are Sony FX3s. And uh, really for the last three and a half years as a company, we have been doing every project besides like two projects ever on our Sony a7 III's. They've been amazing workhorse cameras. We haven't had any issues aside from me breaking them, leaving them on the glide cam and they fall over and the HDMI port breaks off, things like that. But as far as like the cameras, the sensors, they still work perfectly. We still have them. We still use them for all sorts of things. However, we were at a point in time where we really felt like we were limited by the camera equipment that we had. And there's a couple major areas that we felt limited. And uh, we did actually buy an Ursa a few months ago. Um, to try to solve some of the issues. We wanted to shoot higher resolution. We wanted to shoot 4K slow-mo. We wanted to have professional audio inputs, all of that stuff that we really thought would help level up our production. So we got the Ursa, we got it all kitted out, built it out. We're feeling really good about it. And it just came time to shoot on it. And we just, it slowed us down so much. Uh, and we really didn't notice that great of a quality difference from our a7 III, to be honest. So we sold the Ursa. Luckily, we were able to recoup 100% of what we spent on the Ursa. So we really didn't lose out on anything. Um, and we just went back to using our a7 III's for everything. Trusty old a7 III's. So the couple areas that we really wanted to improve on the a7 III, the a7 III does a really great job at a lot of things, but there were a couple things that really just bothered us. First of all was rolling shutter. Um, we were shooting more and more 4K, relying less on slow-mo, really wanting to shoot more you know, narrative, documentary. We're shooting a lot of music videos. There's really not a ton of slow-mo in the music videos that we shoot right now. And the rolling shutter when shooting in 4K on the a7 III is pretty bad. So we wanted to improve that, obviously looked into the a7S III as well as the FX3. Um, so rolling shutter should be significantly improved on this and we will actually be coming out with a YouTube video testing and really showing the difference between these two cameras and going in depth on you know why we made the switch from the a7 III to the FX3. The next thing obviously is resolution. So getting 4K at 120 frames per second will allow us to do things that we've never been able to do before. We're able to shoot product videos and incorporate digital zooming or whatever that it means, but having that extra resolution in slow-mo uh, can't hurt at least. We will definitely use it, not every day for everything, um, but we definitely will utilize the slow motion capabilities of this camera. And then the third big thing was really just an audio solution. Um, we've been filming on DSLRs since we started our company and really forever. Um, and that was what was really nice about the Ursa was that it had two professional XLR jacks. You could hook up a shotgun mic, you could run it on the camera for run and gun, getting clean directional audio, instead of having to rely on a Video Mic Pro or a wireless solution or something like that. So obviously with this camera, one big, big perk of it is that it does come with the audio handle. So those are really the three like biggest picture things. Even just after setting up this camera for this video, I've found several things that are significant improvements over the a7 III. Uh, FX3 is the camera and uh, audio is running directly into the handle. So you're able to really see how it sounds, how it looks, as well as the autofocus performance. We will be using autofocus through this whole video. It's locked onto my eye so I can, you know, step back here, come up here. What, get in your grill a little bit? It can't, it doesn't lose autofocus. No, but in all seriousness, I was testing this out right before this video shoot and I was like blown away at how fast it kept up with me moving forward and backward. 
way better autofocus than the a7 III. I can already tell I'm super excited to be able to use it more. Um, typically haven't really used autofocus a ton because it's not that great, but I will probably be utilizing it a little bit more on this camera. So now let's talk about why the FX3 over the a7S III, which actually was the camera we were gonna buy initially. That was our original plan was we would just upgrade to the a7S III. Uh, and the problem with that is you cannot buy them right now. Uh, at the time of this filming, right now, if you go to eBay and you look up A7S III bodies, you can't find a used one for under $4,000. It's actually insane. And there's no estimate anywhere on when this will be back in stock. It just says back ordered. And if you look online, there's no updates of big shipments coming out. There's nothing, it's just crickets. So I started looking at the FX3 primarily because the a7s3 was out of stock and so i started looking at the fx3 and bnh initially had a two to four week estimated in stock date for the fx3 so i thought okay i'm gonna have to wait maybe three months for an a7s3 maybe longer maybe we should just spend the extra few hundred bucks get the fx3 have the recording handle and have an overall better camera for what we need for less than it would cost me right now to go buy a used A7S III, which seemed ridiculous and I was not going to do. Uh, we did reach out to another distributor. They said that their vendors were legitimately buying uh, Sony cameras above retail right now just to be able to sell them because no one can get stock anywhere. So I put in an order for the FX3s in hopes that they would ship soon. Uh, and that was, I think, probably four or five weeks ago at this point. Um, waited a couple weeks, you know, I checked in here and there, requested status updates, all of that good stuff, because I'm impatient. And one day when I checked the status, it then said that the estimated availability was in March. So it had gotten pushed back a few weeks. Um, and I was like, okay, whatever. At least I know how long I'm waiting. I would rather that than order a camera that's on back order indefinitely and have no idea when it would ship. So I'm like, okay, at least I know if I'm getting something in March, we'll do this. So I kept the order, uh, got an email like last week and they said, your order is shipped. And I, we were in Minnesota. Uh, Darren and I were filming up in Minnesota. I got the email and I was like, no way. Like this can't be happening right now. And so shout out to B&H, honestly, for that. I think that it was an estimated of four to six weeks and they shipped it two weeks after I put the order in. So great job, B&H. That's why I go through you because you always have stock on everything and it's great. So that's why we got the FX3 and not the A7S3. And honestly, looking back, I think we made the right decision after setting up the audio handle and really just using this camera one time. Um, there's just something different about it. It is a cinema camera. It's built like a brick. It's not, it doesn't have a viewfinder uh, and it, it feels familiar, but it feels new and different all at the same time. So I'll get off my soapbox. I know you guys came here to, for an unboxing and not to hear me rant for 10 minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and unbox the Sony FX3. Now, so let's go ahead and get this open. Um, I will say just Sony's packaging. I'm not even gonna worry about giving this like points like I normally would because it's a camera and if I didn't think it were a five out of five, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy it. I would keep using the camera that I've loved for the last three and a half years. So I'm not gonna get into all that. I'm just gonna show you what comes in the box and really uh, just a look at the camera itself. So first thing, open up the box. Packaging is nothing special. Uh, if I were giving this a point, it would be like two out of five on packaging. It's actually pretty terrible for a product that's this expensive. Um, but you know what? I didn't pay for the box and I really just care about the camera. So uh, in here you have a USB-C to USB-A, so you can plug in the camera for firmware updates. You can plug it in to charge the battery if you don't have a charger, which if you buy an FX3 and you don't have an external charger, what are you doing? Uh, documentation, don't need that, don't want it. Won't take it, won't read it. Don't need it. And then in the box here, I'm just gonna set this up so you can see it a little bit. So we have our XLR handle, just beautiful custom foam packaging. Not, not really, it's just kind of stuffed in some bubble wrap in there, but uh, it works. Um, so here's the handle. Obviously we can take off the plastic wrap because who needs that? Just to kind of show you around the handle a little bit, on this left side, you have all of your controls for what channel you wanna use if you want to have a limiter and all of your volume control and all of that stuff. On the right side, you have your two XLR ports and then under this little flap is your uh, three and a half millimeter. So if you wanna run a normal Rode video mic into this or you wanna ro run like a, a Rode Wireless Go 2, which we probably will do, you can run it directly into the handle, which is cool. And then on the back here, you just have essentially an input selector switch. Obviously you have the 
Um, the holder for the microphone up here, um, they do sell like rubber rings, I think, to adapt this to different microphones. I'm sure that the uh, NTG3 will not fit in here as is, so we would, we'll definitely need to look into that. Um, aside from that, you just have a couple quarter inches. Uh, we did order small rig handle extenders for these, which I think will really help because they're big enough to hold and it's comfortable, but I think wanting to add a monitor to the back of this, you'll really wanna hold it like right here uh, for it to be balanced properly. So I think adding, it adds like another inch and a half, puts a cold shoe mount at the end, puts a NATO rail on top, just makes it nicer. That's how I like it. Plenty of mounting options. Um, so that's the handle. Uh, and then I guess the last thing is you just have like a handle audio on and off switch right here. So that's the handle. <coughs> and then the next compartment is the camera itself. Again, I can't believe they put their cameras in this stuff, to be honest with you. Like, I mean, on a camera that's this beautiful and this nice, like you're just gonna, what is this gonna do? This isn't gonna help it get protected from shipping from UPS guy throwing it around. It's you not gonna, with it. yeah, I mean, I guess I could use it as toilet paper. Um, this is the camera itself. Uh, I think it's beautiful. I I'm not a huge fan of the gray. Obviously I'd prefer black, but if there were any color but black, dark gray would be the color I would pick. Um, all of the buttons, just from setting that one up and feeling it, just everything feels super quality. What I've come to expect from Sony, but definitely taken up a level now that they've had a few years removed from the a7 III to improve on everything. Um, I don't have any complaints so far on the build quality of this camera. It feels really great. Aside from that, in the case, or in the box, you get a wall charger. So they actually included that with this one, which is great. The A7Threes did not come with a wall charger, so we've been using Wasabi Power dual chargers forever, which they work great, and I'm probably still gonna use those on these batteries because this thing takes up an outlet for every single battery you wanna charge, whereas those you can literally plug in 12 of them to one uh, like USB hub thing. So, And then the last thing in the box is this little hot shoe um, that you can mount to the handle if you want to attach a flash or something else. Um, I think that's pretty cool. I believe how it works is you, it would actually provide power through the handle to the hot shoe mount um, and you could detach it right here. Probably won't use this. Like I said, we will put a handle extension that will cover this top plate up and then any cold shoes that we'd wanna use. We don't really use hot shoes that often. Um, so I don't, or ever actually, I don't think I've ever used a hot shoe attachment. So probably won't be needing that, uh, but it's nice that they included it in case you wanted to put a flash or something else that's hot shoe uh, compatible right here on the handle. Well guys, that's pretty much it for the FX3 unboxing. I will be doing more videos um, going over in depth the specs of this camera, why we switched from the a7 III to the FX3. I will also be doing a video demonstrating setting up this camera, going through the menus, and what how we would set up this camera essentially. Um, so stay tuned for those videos. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you haven't already, hit the bell to be notified every time we drop a video. We're dropping podcasts, we're dropping gear reviews, unboxings, all kind of great stuff. You don't wanna miss it, so hit that bell to be notified when we drop new videos. But thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.